Hello everyone, my name is Ronit. In this video, I will show you how to generate PWM signal in MATLAB simulation software. Generative pulse width modulation is very much familiar in case of inverter topology and it is most efficient method of controlling the gain and the output voltage. PWM signal is generated by using two signals. One is carrier signal and the another one is the reference signal. Here we take triangular signal as a carrier signal and sinusoidal signal as a reference signal. So let's do it on this software. At first open the MATLAB software. Here I am using MATLAB 1016A version. So do click on new, then click on Simulink model and after that click on blank model here a blank model is open after that click on the browse library and here so at first we have to take the sinusoidal wave in simulink there is option this this is source sources click on the sources and here you can see the sine wave right click on it and add block to the model and after that take a repeating sequence also do same thing So after this go to sync and we will see the output waveform so using this scope and also there is a important parameter name power byte you can search this P O W E R power byte and press enter. power guide is important because it is necessary for the simulation of any simulink model which is containing the sim power system block and also it is used for the analysis of and measurement of the parameter like voltage current and power so go to our blank model and at first we have to see how to generate a triangular signal by using the repeating sequence so at first click on the power guide then simulation type then move on the discrete and give the sample time 1 e to the power minus 5 click ok and at first we will see how repeating sequence is look like give the simulation time 0 0.1 and click on the run double click on the scope and here you can see that the waveform is starting from 0 and ending to 0 0.1 and we are using this 0. Point, we give the time value to 0. 0.1 so it is ending to 0. 0.1 ok so at first in case of triangular wave we have three time values and with respect to these three time values we have to give the three output values so at first click on the time value and give here 0 space 1 space 2 and we all know that that time equal to 1 by frequency if we give the 50 hertz frequency then the time of the total cycle is 20 millisecond so 
our whole cycle should be 20 millisecond and you can change your frequency also you can you can change your frequency like 50 hertz 100 hertz 1000 hertz etc so So 1 by 100 into 2, this is 20 millisecond. So we give the frequency and with respect to these three time values, we have to give the output values 0, space 1, space 0 and OK. After that, run the same thing on the scope that our triangle array is made by using repeating sequence so after that we need a relational operator so go to the library browser and here in simulink model there is a commonly used block so if you click on the commonly used block then you can see the relational operator add block to the model and using this relational operator okay at first Mm, to click on the sine wave and give the frequency here the frequency is omega that we know that omega equal to 2 pi f so you have to give 2 into pi into 50 so generally we give the 50 hertz frequency and omega equal to 2 pi f to click ok And whenever sine wave is greater than equal to our triangular wave, then the signal will generate. Click OK. Double click on the scope and click on the settings, configuration pair of properties. And then click on the number of input ports 2 click OK and score and see the two inputs that is one is our OK if you are facing this type of problem then go to the solver model configuration parameter and then go to solver then change this is this from variable step to fixed step and the solver change it into Ranjikutta then additional option give the sample time 1 e to the power minus 5 click ok and then do the run and check mm, the problem is solved so and this is our output and the relational operator which is connected to the scope and then click on the run 
and our PWM signal is generated. So this is the simple technique how to generate the PWM signal. So in the next video I will show you the full bridge inverter using this PWM control technique. Okay, thank you.